Good evening, everyone. My name is Nena Anasike. Uh, my name is Parth. Most of you probably know me as JP. Good evening. And welcome to White Coat Ceremony. Round of applause, yeah. All right. So before we start um, the night off, uh, we want to have a couple prayers for invocation. Uh, could I please have uh, Abed and uh, Bellion over here for a few words? Lord, we thank you for today. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor. We worship you, oh Lord. We reference you here today. Lord, even as you brought us from far away, from different part of the world, we give you glory, oh Lord. We adore you. Lord God, we pray that our journey as we start today will be one that will bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, we pray that you be with us. Help us, oh Lord, give us wisdom and knowledge. Help us to stay focused on what we have come here for. For the ceremony tonight, oh Lord, we put into your hand and we pray that you will be with us. We pray your peace upon us. We pray your peace upon our family. We pray your peace upon our countries and all over the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahi r-Rahmanir rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغذوب عليهم ولا الضالين Thank you for those beautiful words. Um, you want to go first? Now we're going to have our welcoming remarks coming from our Dean of Basic Sciences, Dr. James Velenueva, MS, PhD. So many titles. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, to the director of, medical director at St. Jude's Hospital, Dr. Radix. Okay, to our director for recruitment, okay, uh, Mr. Daniel Saud, okay, uh, to our senior professor, Dr. Kumar, okay, our dean of student affairs, okay, Dr. Rashid Agula, to all, okay, my colleagues in the faculty and staff, to the parents and friends of our students who are here, friends from St. Lucia, and of course, to all our IAU students, good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the 28th White Coat Ceremony. Congratulations to all our students who will be symbolically wearing their white coat this evening. Our Executive Dean, okay, Dr. Cletus Carvajal, is okay, sending his greetings to and wishes to congratulate you all as well. Now, uh, there are so many things to look forward to in your journey, and I would like to tell everyone that there are also a lot of bright things to be excited about here at IAU. To all our new students, the first week has passed, and there are at least 60 plus more weeks spent on the island. So be thankful for the times that you will be staying here in St. Lucia. Please treat these times as an opportunity to grow and evolve. This is a charming island, so let's make it even more charming by having okay, this attitude of selfless devotion to serve and to care about the community. There will be challenges, I'm sure, that will come your way, challenges that will stretch your intellectual and emotional boundaries. Please treat them as gifts that will make you stronger and better each day. I would like for everyone to have that aggressive optimism, to always be excellent, and to have an unwavering drive to succeed. We are all here to support you, okay, all the way, so good luck. God bless us all in this happy and eventful evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. James. 
Next on the program, we are going to have the presentation of candidates by Dr. Ray Christian Cabrero, MD, and Dr. Rajni Ravirada. But first, we would like to have a brief introduction on Dr. Chris. Dr. Chris is an assistant professor at IAU, and he obtained his medical degree at the University of East Ramon Mag Saysay Memorial Medical Center in the Philippines. As a primary health physician, healthcare physician, he worked in the emergency department of St. Dominic Hospital in the Philippines. In 2001, he attained his associate membership in the Philippine Society of Experimental and Clinical Pharmacology and began teaching for his alma mater. Equipped and trained in the philosophy of problem-based learning, Dr. Cabreras has a wide experience in the ped pedagogy, it's an interesting word, pedagogy of innovative teaching using case-based scenarios. With an advocacy for, for teaching, he also taught anatomy and physiology for the College of Nursing at the Central Colleges of the Philippines. Dr. Cabreras has almost 13 years of teaching experience in the field of clinical pharmacology. He was the former head of the Department of, the Pharma of Pharmacology at the AMA International University College of Medicine Kingdom in Bahrain. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Okay. As we call your name, please come forward and receive your white coats and stethoscope. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Margaret Adedeji. Sir Faraz Ahmed. <laughs> Joshua Amin. Mofe Awala. <laughs> Crystal Bakatukanda. Halima Bekila. <laughs> Patricia Billy. Monica Chitre. <laughs> Ray. 
Rika Copeland. Simeon Imadzadeh. Roda S8. Irvin Eugene. Hazel Hernandez. Ilava Zahan Jaish. Alexander Kuruvila. Emmanuel Leyemo. Umar Malik Next, next Almira Mohammed Aravind Mohan Wilson Ngure
perpetual Oduro Eboa. Oni nechi new okay Tolu Valashe Olusula Bellion Autry. Three words and Rajan. Darian Ramsumir. Stacy Regis. Jane Reville. Abed Shakbas. And lastly, Dave Verk. Thank you very much, doctors. Um, so next, um, we're gonna have our oath, but before uh, we do, I wanna introduce uh, this gentleman. He's gonna be your histology professor. You're gonna learn histology, but you're also gonna learn how to become great doctors as well. He gives you, he'll give you nice motivational speeches. He'll give you speeches as to how to conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. And each way, just remember this, he's trying to make you a better physician. I still remember my class. 
I, used, I, I did get quite a few, and it's made me a better person. And you guys will see, he's one of the better ones, and here's one thing you'll hear quite a bit. You'll start from the bottom, but this is where you are, all right? Please welcome Dr. Sounds. Good evening. Um, so at this point, you know, you are going to be uh, wearing your white coats and your stethoscopes, so wear them proudly, but uh, also with the responsibility that IAU uh, bestows on your shoulders. All right? So I would like you uh, incoming students with your white coats to please stand. I hope you have your oaths with you. And we are going to read it one paragraph at a time, and then I'll wait till you finish, all right? Um, I publicly acknowledge and accept the privileges and responsibilities given to me as a physician in training and dedicate myself to provide care to those who need. I approach all aspects of my education with honesty and integrity, embrace opportunities to learn from the patients, teachers, and colleagues. I approach all aspects of my education with honesty I will always maintain the highest standards of professional conduct. I will certify only that which I have personally verified, and I will never receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations. I will certify only that which I have personally verified, and I will never receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations. I will value the knowledge of and wisdom of the physicians who have preceded me. I will recognize my weakness and strengths and strive to develop those qualities that will earn the respect of my parents, my colleagues, my family, and myself. I will respect the humanity, rights, and decisions of all patients and attend to them with compassion and without bias. I will respect the humanity, the rights, and I will maintain patient confidentiality and be tactful in my words and actions. I will value the diversity of the patient experiences, cultures, and beliefs because it enhances my ability to care for them and enrich my education. I will not forget that there is an art to medicine as well as a science, and the warmth, sympathy, and understanding are integral to patient care. I will strive to earn the trust of my patients placed in me and the respect that the society places upon my profession. I will strive to earn the trust of my patients placed in me and the respect that the society I will recognize the privileges afforded to me as a physician in training and promise not to abuse them. Even as a student, I have a responsibility to improve the standard of health in my community, to increase access to care to the underserved, and to advance medical knowledge. As I accept these new responsibilities, I will not forget the importance of my own health and well-being. As I accept these new responsibilities, I will not forget the importance of my own health and well-being. 
I will continue to value my relations with those who have supported me in the past and those who will share my future. Knowing my own limitations and those of medicine, I commit myself to a lifelong journey of learning how to cure, relieve, and comfort with humility and passion. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Congratulations, class of spring 2015. <laughs> I didn't say you could sit down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so next, uh, before I have our next guest, uh, I would like to introduce her. It is an actually a very big honor to have Ms. Radix, Dr. Radix here. Um, among all of her accolades, here are just a few of them. She's been the medical director at St. Jude's Hospital since last year. She's also been the public health consultant for all the Caribbean uh, nations since January of 2004. On top of that, she's also held uh, the, the director of public health for Trinidad and Tobago from 2010 till 2011. Along with that, she's also been the associate uh, professor for public health and assistant dean at St. George's University from November 2003 till 2009. And, like I said, a very accomplished uh, chief guest. So, as a part of her education, she did her uh, MPH from uh, University of Medicine and Dentistry uh, of New Jersey, and she received her MD from St. George's. Please give a big hand for Dr. Radix. Thank you very much for that um, very warm introduction and welcome. Um, members of the head table, faculty, staff of IAU, students, white coat recipients, new pre-medical students, family, well-wishers, parents, guests, friends. It is my pleasure to have been asked to give remarks at today's ceremony. This marks a celebration of a turning point in the lives of today's white coat recipients. It marks the beginning of a new leg of an ongoing journey to become excellent, experienced, compassionate, and caring physicians. I'm privileged to be a part of the experience because sooner than you think, you will be my colleagues in the fraternity of physicians. And you will have the joy of being able to help persons in need, along with the burden of the responsibility, sometimes for another person's life. This is a privilege for which you cannot be too prepared. And your journey, your preparation is beginning now. So today, I want to focus on a few quotes, specifically by two great men, I think so, and to use their inspirational words to encourage you to make the most of your upcoming experiences in order to become the best physicians that you can be. You just took an oath in which you uh, vowed to value the knowledge and wisdom of physicians that preceded you. So one of the men from whom I plan to quote quite a lot today is Sir William Osler. Dr. Osler, also known by some as the father of modern medicine, was a founding professor of Johns Hopkins University Hospital, a founding member of the Association of American Physicians, a champion for bedside clinical training. I mean, this is the guy who basically invented the clinical clerkships. It's like what we do as standard medical practice residency training, 
journal clubs. I mean, the man did a lot in his lifetime for what medical education is today. He spent a lifetime influencing med medical education with an aim to having better physicians. Better physicians so that they could better help people. And so you are products, you will be products of his life's work. The second great doctor from whom I have throughout my lifetime taken advice and from whom I've given advice is Dr. Theodore Zaus Geisel, or more affectionately known as Dr. Seuss. So I'm going to begin with a quote from Sir William Osler, the father of modern medicine. And this quote kind of frames everything else that I'm going to say. And he said this, the best preparation for tomorrow is to do today's work superbly well. And I'll say it again. The best preparation for tomorrow is to do today's work superbly well. Very simple, yet very profound. I think we've all heard some variation of a quote like this. I, when I was in secondary school, for those of you who went to secondary schools, I think some of you went to high schools, they were kind of similar. I had teachers who would tell me, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Have you heard this? If you fail to plan, plan to fail. I think this is another version, but this was being said by a founder of medical education, and he said it better for the situation in which we find ourselves. And I'll say it again. The best preparation for tomorrow is to do today's work superbly well. He was speaking to future doctors when he worded this statement. So let's break it down a bit. The best preparation for tomorrow is to do today's work. I'll focus on today. Your colleagues will tell you, medical school is a short time during which you have to absorb vast amounts of information. Vast amounts of information for which you need to prepare for vast responsibility. And so every day that along this journey, you need to do today's work. Because when tomorrow comes, you may not have the time to do both yesterday's and today's work. So you have to do today's work. I don't know how more simply to put it. The most successful students understand this early on and live this mantra daily. Do today's work. There was a lecture today. Is there work related to that that I need to do today? Is there a part of the syllabus that I need to cover today that's in my plan that needs to be done today? Is there a chapter I need to read today? Is there something I need to understand today? I should learn today because I will need to save a life tomorrow. That is the tomorrow for which you're preparing. But it goes a little further. The best, the best preparation for tomorrow is to do today's work. He was talking to future doctors. So he didn't just say do today's work. So it's not just enough to just do the work. You know, we're just, we're trying to pass the course, slide by with a C, you know, just, that's not enough because of the responsibility of the tomorrow for which you're preparing. While along the way, you've got to pass your exams, you've got to do what you've got to do to get to the next step, at the end of the day, everything that you're learning now is preparing you for a bigger responsibility tomorrow. And so you must always keep that in mind, that the bigger picture is that, do you understand what this is? Can you apply it? Is it something that you can see how it's going to uh, work in the future? And if you can't see it now, trust us. If it's part of your syllabus, it's something you need to know. So make sure you know it now. So that when you figure out why you need to know it, you do know it, okay? Um, 
So he didn't just say, do today's work. He said, do today's work well. And furthermore, he went, to say, went on to say, do it superbly well. So I encourage you, as you move through IAU, to do today's work and do it superbly well so that you can prepare for tomorrow. And as you move through medical school, there are going to be two major ways that must work hand in hand in order for you to do, truly do today's work. Um, you've got, you can't get away from the fact that there are going to be books you've got to read. I know there's a whole long list of books that you had to go on and buy or download, or I don't know what they're doing these days with books. I had books that I had to have to oh, now this Everything is a little bit easier, but it's not easier because you still have to absorb that information in whatever format that it is, right? There's, Oslo also said, he who studies medicine without books sails an uncharted sea. Some students think, you know, I need to have seven books on every subject that I do. Uh, I need to have all the books, you know, this, this book and that book and X book and Y book. But it's easy to buy books. It's not as easy to read the books. And it's harder yet to make sure you understand everything that you've read in those books. So my advice to you is, that as you go through your various courses, classes, clinical rotations, every step of the way, each uh, course rotation that you do, the ultimate reason that you're here. Because one day, in one moment, it may be the moment a child that you've delivered takes his first breath, or the moment that a hospice patient you've been caring for takes his last or the aha moment that saves the life of someone, or the time you took to teach someone to prevent their disease from getting worse. And in one of these moments, one day in the future, you will know in your soul what all of today's work was in preparation for. You're on your own, you know what to do, no. You're on your own and you know what you know and you're the guy who'll decide where to go. Thank you so much, Dr. Addix. That was quite lovely. For our next guest, he has served as the admissions director at the American University of Antigua and at the University of Hawaii School of Medicine. And now we're glad to have him as, uh, at IAU as our new um, director for recruitment. Please welcome Mr. Daniel Saab. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dr. James, Dr. Rashid, faculty, physicians, family members and guests, and most importantly, students. I want to welcome and congratulate uh, the students and especially their families who supported these students for so many years in obtaining their goals of entering medical school. On behalf of the Office of the President, the senior leadership team, the Vice President, please accept my heartfelt congratulations as you begin this journey of developing into a physician. Each of you was recruited and admitted because of your passion and commitment to medicine. It was during your upbringing, your childhood, your college years that you exhibited the qualities that will develop you into a great physician. Your willingness to, take, to work hard, your intelligence, your commitment to the others, your moral integrity, and I hope your willingness to self-reflect as you go through this incredible development. Becoming a physician is no different than developing your human, social, ethnic, or religious identity. In fact, the next four years of your life will mold you and develop you so that you will identify yourself foremost as a physician, symbolized by this esteemed white coat. And although the white coat can symbolize authority, it should not put you on a pedestal. It should not shroud you 
in a cloak of arrogance or robbing you of the compassion and empathy. Patients will see this white coat as a source of knowledge and skill, much like I see it in my physician. But many will not fully extend their trust in, to you until they get some sense of humility and individuality that lie beneath the white coat and that lie in each of you. When the white coat ceremony was first originated in 1993 by Dr. Arnold Gold at Columbia University in New York, his intention was to embody in the student the principles of honesty, loyalty, respect, and humility. And so I hope you will live up to those principles as students as well as physicians. Uh, you're joining a student-centered institution uh, for your development and training as a physician. And as a member of the student affairs and leadership team out of the Dallas office, um, we are very excited that you have taken this moment to be, make us part of your journey. And we really do believe that with each student's success comes our success. As you don your white coats today and uh, you take your first step outside of this hall, I hope you will take a moment and realize that this is the first step on a developmental journey that will be exciting, it will be frustrating, but it will probably be the most fantastic journey you, each of you have ever taken. And speaking on behalf of the Office of the President and the senior leadership team, we all welcome you on this journey. And in closing, I would say, may you always remain blessed with the knowledge and wisdom you acquire, and may you always strive to be a humble, empathetic, and skillful physician, and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Saud. Next, we have remarks by our senior student, who is also the current SGA president. I would please like to welcome Mr. Balikan Dordu. Good evening, everybody. As they said, uh, my name is Balikan Dordu. I'm the uh, present uh, student body president of this uh, great institution. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge everybody here, uh, members of staff, academic, non-academic, distinguished guests um, of the society, well wishers, family and friends, and then most importantly, uh, the main reason why we're here, uh, these guys who just a couple minutes ago sold their souls to the profession. Um, <laughs> uh, more seriously, I mean, they recited some very solemn words that uh, define what their life would be uh, as they know it. You know. Um, it would be very cliche for me to say uh, I was just here a couple months ago saying the things you did and I was in this seat, you know, in the very position, not really knowing what to expect, but I was excited nonetheless. Uh, a lot of people gave their own opinions on what med school would be like and what living on an island would be like. And from all I gathered, uh, I found out it would be very difficult. Uh, on the bright side, though, I'm here and I've gone so far. And I feel like if I was able to go this far, which is not very far in the entire scheme of things, uh, I think nobody or everybody can do it. And not just do it, but go even better. I'd like to once again congratulate you guys on one of the most important steps one would take in the pursuit of becoming a physician. And I hope this would be the beginning of even better decisions as we progress down this uh, chosen career. Medicine, as we know, it is a very noble profession. And it is said to be almost divine. Uh, I'd like to quote uh, Voltaire, a uh, not very famous French philosopher and writer, but he says, those who are occupied in the restoration of health to others by joint exertion of skill and humanity are above all the great of the earth. They're even, uh, partaking, they even partake of divinity, since to preserve and renew is almost as noble as to create. Uh, we have all been inducted into this uh, profession whereby People hear the two letters that come before our names, DR, and then they accord us some certain level of respect, of, uh, of trust, and in return, they expect us to act in a certain way. You know, I'm pretty sure that in a couple of weeks and as time rolls by, your family, your friends, they'll call you and ask you, uh, oh, uh, this is wrong with me, giving you certain symptoms and expect you to give a reasonable diagnosis. Well, that might not be possible until the couple of months and semesters roll by, but in the light of that, it is 
on us to act in a certain manner where we portray humility, we portray responsibility, we portray reliability, and as doctors to be, we portray empathy, compassion. You know. For me, it's mind-blowing that we learn how to give care, how to provide uh, health to people. I think it's cool that we learn to fix people. But uh, we should never forget that it's a privilege that we're afforded and we're only here to serve. As doctors to be, uh, people might tend to see us as if we're slightly more than we are, which is just flesh and blood. But uh, it lies on us once again to remain humble and never to forget that we could be the patient lying right there. There are many hurdles uh, from today to we graduate and a lot of challenges we'd face after this, but I encourage us to take it one step at a time. Let us help each other to get to that finish line. You know, your hurdle might be the next anatomy exam. Your friend's hurdle might be being away from home for the first time. But I say let's be our brother's keepers and let's help each other cross that line. And then a lot of people have gone ahead of you. A lot of IAU students have sat in this position, feeling the same uncertainties you felt, feeling the same anxieties, but they've done it. They've become physicians and they've taught many lives. And your ability to touch lives starts right now and right here. And with that being said, I'd like to quickly say we are opportune to receive part of our education on this uh, beautiful island. Very nice, uh, very scenic, it's warm, literally, and with regards to the people. But uh, even though the hectic curriculum that we're facing usually confines us to the walls of our classroom or the library or wherever we deem it fit to hide our head in books. We also have time to kick back, relax, have some fun. You know, there's no doubt in the fact that when you work hard, you have every right to play hard. But uh, remember why you're here. I'm pretty sure you've heard that a couple of times, and you'll probably still hear it a lot more times, thanks to that guy, but uh, it's the truth. Remember why you're here. I'd like you to ask yourself, why exactly are you here? And I'm sure, I hope it's for the right reasons. And let that be your check, let that be your guide. Because at times we tend to veer off of what is really important. And then that helps us come back into, into right standing. I would have loved to end on a very uh, fun and games note, but I'd rather remind us of the seriousness of the task ahead. Speaking purely from my experience, there will be times where you feel uh, almost indomitable, you feel on top of the world like everything is a breeze. And there will be times when it's obvious that you, you need help. But I use a family. It's not just a school, you know. Once something is wrong, feel free to talk to anybody. Feel free to talk to your classmates. Feel free to talk to people ahead of you. Feel free to talk to the staff. Everybody wants to help you. Uh, i just share some of my experience. When I first arrived on the island, I was a bit taken aback by a couple of things. Uh, most importantly was the uh, sheer size of the school, because we drove past from the airport. And I saw the logo. I wasn't really sure, was that the school? And in my mind, I was like, oh, my mom was reminding me, you know, if you're not comfortable, we could always go back. But I stayed on, I uh, went for orientation. And then inside me, you know, I had this uh, confidence that I had made the right choice. And quickly, I learned that even though IU is a growing institution, they provide us with much more than we need to, uh, a lot more than we need to succeed. And the onus lies on each and every one of us to uh, make the best of the opportunity we're afforded and uh, you make the school proud, you make your friends and your families proud, you make your nations proud, most importantly, you make yourselves proud. Um, once more, never put a cap on yourself. I don't know where you're coming from or what your experiences in your past schools have been, but I want you to take this as a new challenge and aim to be the best. Strive to be better than you have ever been. And uh, by the grace of God, I know you'd do wonderfully well. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Ballet. That was very inspirational. You guys feel inspired? I feel inspired. All right. So next up, we have remarks from a first semester student. Let's please welcome Miss Christelle Bakatukanda. Greetings, parents, family, friends, faculty, staff, and of course, my colleagues. On behalf of the class of 2015, welcome to our white coat ceremony. Unlike any graduation, this is a new type of milestone. Until now, we spend most of our schooling in lectures and labs. However, I'm gonna also quote Sir William Osler, once stated, 
medicine is learned by the bedside is, and not in a classroom. Today, we mark the transition and take our first step toward the wards, where the patient is our ultimate teachers, which will begin our clinical next week. It would be foolish for us to think that we reached this point in our own. We owe great depth of gratitude to all of you sitting in the audience today and to those that could not attend. As we embark on this journey, a really tough one, I must say, we cannot and shall not give up, despite the tough thoughts about leaving our family members behind and the good home cooked meal in our nice comfy beds. This train has begun to move. This train has, to be, to, has begun to move, so let's stay on board and not give up. To the administration and faculty, we thank you for your dedication and education and well-being. The guidance and time you make available to us is greatly appreciated. Whether you are a lecturer, a preceptor, or a dean, you are the reason that our practicing medicine is no longer only a dream, but is now a reality that is tangible and enticing as ever. And finally, to all our family and friends, thank you for your support. You were there for us every step of our way as we faced the daunting admission process and le later as we shared every gruesome detail about our first anatomy lab. <laughs> you keep us sane, encouraging us when we feel overwhelmed. We will never be able to repay this step and we can only hope our accomplishment have made you proud. And so, on behalf of class of 2015, entering class of 2015, we thank you all for getting us here and for seeing us into the future. And to my classmates, as Dr. Sora told us on our first day, fake it until you become it. Thank you. Thank you. The father of MD1 student, Stacy Regis. Who's Stacy Regis? Yeah. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> All right. I would like to introduce Mr. Osbert Regis. Good evening, everyone. Head table, faculty, parents, supporters, and the students. It is indeed a pleasure and a privilege for me to give some remarks on behalf of the parents. A lot has been said, the previous speaker, and some of the ones before. I've all spoken about the journey that you have taken. What I can say to you is this, this is not a job. Driving a bus is a job. You're expected to, to conduct yourself on the road according to the rules governing that particular activity. But when you park that bus and you walk away from it, you are not expected to behave in any way connected to being a driver, not so being a physician. You have embarked upon a new way of life. It is more than a profession, it, it is part of your life. And those of us who have spent a lifetime pursuing a particular profession will understand that you can't be one thing on the job and one thing off the job. In order to be a good physician, you start by developing yourself and become a good person. The world does not need more doctors, it needs better doctors. And that is, the only way you can do that is to become a better person. Parents, on behalf of the parents who have sacrificed quite a lot in more ways than one to ensure that you have, you have reached this far. All I ask, all we ask of you is to make first and foremost yourself proud, make us proud, make the institution proud. And the best way you can do that is to show appreciation. Show appreciation for the sacrifices that we have made. 
show appreciation for the support that your family. By you being here, I am sure some aspects of your family life has been disadvantaged. Perhaps another sibling has to wait a few more years before he or she can develop because of the, the, the tremendous sacrifice and burden that undertaking this journey with you has caused. Some, one person says, my daughter going to medical school, becoming a doctor, is already starting to make me sick. Sick in the pocket. <laughs> but I will do it anyway. And that is the kind of thing that we have. We are not, the, the willingness that we have to support you has to be balanced by that sense of appreciation, that sense of, I want to do it. And don't do it because your parents perhaps were doctors before you, or that is the dream that they had for you. Do it because it is the right thing to do. Do it because it is important, not just to you, but for the rest of the world. And all I can say to you is, you were here in St. Lucia, it's a beautiful place. But you're not here on a holiday. You were here for a specific purpose. So, that is your main goal. For, for the next two years, you will enjoy the country. And I say to the parents who were there and who have to go back, those of us who are around, I feel that it is part of my collective responsibility as a parent to see that every student here is cared after in one way or another. I am sure that I'll be seeing a lot more of you for the next two years, but all I want to ask of you is make yourself proud, make your parents proud, make your country proud, and make the world a better place. I thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Regis. So before we have our next, uh, guest, our next speakers come up for the faculty and staff awards, uh, we would like to take a moment to talk a little bit about our speakers. First, uh, I would like to take a moment to talk about Dr. James. Dr. James is a very accomplished man. He got his PhD from, uh, in biochemistry at University of the Philippines. He's also done a lot of post-grad research, um, some of the locations being Notre Dame University in the US, uh, Institute for Protein Research in Osaka, uh, which is in Japan, and Bari University in Italy. But aside from that, Dr. James is one of the most dedicated and motivational people you will ever meet at this institution. He will always have a minute for you. If you ever have anything going on, he will take you to his office, sit you down at the round table, and listen to you about what you have to say. And when I say he's listening to you, he's not just uh, saying yes, okay. He actually listens. And he'll actually come and talk to you after and keep up with you as the progress of that issue. I, haven't, I don't know about you guys, but I really haven't seen this at higher institutions. And to have him as our Dean of Basic Sciences, I feel lucky and proud. So that's Dr. James for you. You'll see him in med too. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Also, we have to introduce your future physio professor in med too, Dr. John. What can I say about Dr. John? Let's, let's obsess with this for a second. <laughs> Dr. John Ramcharachar is a citizen of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and earned his doctoral degree at the University of Maryland in 2003. His area of expertise is sensory neuroscience and he has published a high impact peer reviewed journal and presented at the international scientific conferences such as the annual meetings of the Society of Neurosciences and the Association for Research in Autolaryngology. All right. All right. Uh, Dr. Ram Charachar has um, gained extensive teaching experience using modern pedagogy all these, man, why? <laughs> <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> 
approaches and diverse um, course offerings at John Hopkins University and at St. Mary's College of Maryland. He also served on campus-wide committees, including strategic and academic planning. So please help us give a warm welcome to Dr. James and Dr. John. <laughs> Thank you for that very nice introduction, Parton and Nena. Okay, uh, Dr. John is also uh, the chairman of uh, research and the faculty development uh, uh, committee okay, at uh, IAU. So that's why he's going to present the award with me. Dr. John. This is uh, an award for the faculty okay, uh, who has uh, garnered the highest uh, average, average in the last K NBME K exam. Okay. Dr. John, go ahead. All right. Uh, we are very pleased to present Dr. Naveen Kandavali with the award for the highest uh, MBME score. <laughs> Dr. Naveen is quite brainy because he's the one who teaches neuroscience. <laughs> when it comes to the brain, he's the best. <laughs> So next we'd like to introduce the people that are going to be presenting the pre-med program certificates. The first person I would like to introduce is Dr. Kamala, MD. Let's talk about Dr. Kamala. Yes, honey. She's wonderful. She's fantastic. You guys will learn in a couple of semesters. She's fantastic. Um, Dr. Kamala is, a li is licensed by the Medical Council of India and was the postgraduate resident in medical microbiology at the Bangalore Medical College in India. She has been with IRU since 2006 as a visiting faculty and currently teaches full-time at St. Lucia campus. In addition to her teaching responsibilities, she is actively involved in affairs of promotions, curriculum, lab development, and budgeting. Dr. Sharma. Before I say anything, I should probably watch myself, considering I have him this semester. Mm -hmm. uh, he got his uh, MD from Gawati Medical College, uh, and uh, he's worked with the WHO. On top of that, he's also um, worked as a research assistant while enrolled full-time uh, for MPH at Johns Hopkins University. But aside from that, my experience with Dr. Sharma has been quite limited, considering I just have him this semester. I knew him last semester from working with him while uh, organizing Indian Night, uh, or Diwali, uh, during uh, last semester. The one thing I know about Dr. Sharma, he tries to make sure the students get what they want. So he won't, he'll try and make sure that even though the administration says, yeah, we have these things, but Dr. Sharma wants to make sure that the students enjoy themselves. They have a great event where everyone has a big smile on their face. And for those of you who actually were there at the Diwali last uh, semester, you guys know how amazing it was. And we also got to see Dr. Kumar perform uh, the Beatles, which was also an amazing experience. And all of that was due to Dr. Sharma's uh, work. So please welcome Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kamala. So good evening, everyone and I welcome everybody once again. And this award is for those uh, pre-med students who are moved on to MD1. So it, it is a great, great pleasure to see the young minds who have joined the pre-med program in our school. They worked hard, they learned the subject matter, and with time they have moved on to the MD1. And very soon I know that they will be into the residencies and, in, and the goal that they want in their life. So I'll start with the first name, Jayes. Please come over. Next we have with us Alexander. Next, I have in my hand Aravind Mohan. Okay. 
perpetual Please come over. And the last one award goes to Rajan Sevastan. All the best, Rajan. Thank you very much. And now it comes time for our awards and closing remarks, and that's going to be delivered to us by Dr. Rashid. But first, I would like to have a few words about Dr. Rashid, current PATH professor. Awesome. All right. Dr. Rashid holds medical licenses in Grenada and Nigeria. He earned his medical degree in medicine and surgery from the prestigious Amadou Bella University in Nigeria. And he has, he was at St. George's University Grenada too for teaching and research fellowship program in pathology. Dr. Rashid was a medical officer at the University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital in Nigeria, where he worked in various departments like nephrology and cardiothoracic units of the teaching hospital, and he had also worked at the St. George's General Hospital, Grenada, with excellent performance and recommendations. Dr. Rashid was a full-time faculty and pathology department at St. George's University in Grenada for many years, and he was the assistant professor in pathology at Atlantic University School of Medicine before joining IAU. So please, everybody, put your hands together for Dr. Rashid. Thank you. The distinguished member of the I table, Dr. Radex, medical director of St. Jude's Hospital, the Dean of Physics Science, Dr. James, Dr. Kumar, Mr. Daniel Sahud, my respected colleagues, faculty, and staff. Good evening. Now, my first task is to present awards to our outstanding students. In doing this, I would like to request the pleasure of our Dean of Physics Science, Dr. James Vendanova. Thank you. Now, the first award is Dean's Award of Excellence to our pre-med student for his outstanding performance in the pre-med program. And this first award goes to Alessandra Kuruvila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The next award, Dean's Award of Excellence to our students in Basic Science Preparatory Program for our standing performance in the program. And this award goes to Amira Mohammed. Now, the basic science. The Dean's Award of Excellence to this student for his outstanding performance in gross anatomy and histology in both MBME and internal mini exams. And this award goes to Samson Tokura. The next Dean's Award of Excellence in semester two for his outstanding performance in biochemistry and genetics in both mini and MBME exams for 2014. This award goes to Chin Xuan Chen.
the next Dean's Award of Excellence goes to the best student in tour semesters for fall 2014 term for his outstanding performance in both MBME and internal mini exams in neuroscience, behavioral science, and microbiology. And this award goes to Zuel Zenedin. Now, the next award is President's Scholarship Award. This one comes with money. <laughs> Tuition discount. Now, this award is in two categories. First, academic performance and also professionalism. Now, the President's Scholarship Award goes to Samson Tokura, outstanding performance in four terms. The next President's Scholarship Award for his outstanding performance both in academics and also professionalism, not only academics. And this award goes to Zuel Zenaldin. Yes. Thank you, Dr. James. Thank you. Now, as all speakers have said, this is the beginning of a long journey. The journey is going to be rough, it's going to be tough, and it's not going to be smooth or true. But with determination and focus, definitely you will succeed. I wish you all the very best, but on the same note, I would like to thank all our invited guests. On behalf of International American University College of Medicine, I would like to say a big thank you to Dr. Radix for finding time to be in our midst. Thank you. Also, on behalf of International American University College of Medicine, I would like to say a big thank you to the family and friends of IEU, the family and friends of the new, what, Indo T. I I would like to recognize Dr. Adesoya. Thank you for being here. I would like to say thank you for those that have contributed to the success of this program, most especially the member of ADBI, Sulal, CB, Miss Sophie, our drivers, everyone, and the member of faculty as well. Thank you. And I will end by saying God bless St. Lucia, God bless IAU, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rashid, and we are definitely together. <laughs> You'll learn. We just want to thank all of you guys for coming out and we want to welcome you guys, MD1s. It's not as hard as it's going to look. It's going to look really difficult, but it's not that bad. You guys just stick together and don't give up and just continue to study, all right? <laughs> <laughs>